So these are, these are the three points I want to provoke. Um, for instance, three moments in which the, we have a kind of reflection on the problem of the belief of indifference. You could say this is another possible logic, or an analogical logic, different from the dominant dichotomic one. Or if I evoke all this problem of difference, um, this indifference that you're talking about uh, in the example of love, can we reach this? Is this an, an ideal point? I, you know, you mentioned attraction. But that's often how love begins, is through attraction. Maybe it's visual, maybe it's spoken. And then maybe we strip these layers of representation away over time. But at the end of the day, it was what enabled indifference to be reached in the first place, or at least approached. So. Can we ever really get away from that constitute the, the constitutive elements of attraction and representation towards indifference? Or, or can an indifference be reached on its own terms? One possible answer would be that if you uh, remain in attraction, then of course you will not reach this point of indifference. But you can, as you said, go on. Can we reach indifference without attraction? Can we reach indifference directly? Uh, in the ontological Schillingian uh, model, I think, yes. Okay. I don't know, but it's, uh, as far as psychology is concerned, we have no science, we have no theories, you know. So that's, uh, what do you think? You, you will never uh, reach uh, indifference without attraction. It's uh, yeah, I'm worried about it. Yeah, in, the, in the Proust, in the Proust uh, story, the, the attraction comes after. There is first this man, absolutely indifferent, and second comes attraction. But you just, in the, the story you but, but it's about, another person with the other hand. Right, you said uh, in Proust's story, the woman fell in love with the man who was indifferent. Not only to her, absolutely indifferent. Sorry? <laughs> He was indifferent mm -hmm. to her. To her, but no, not, not only to her, to the, to the world. Perfectly. But she wasn't indifferent. No, no. So her love, she was a, where does her love so come from? So in, in Christian model, uh, love, attraction comes from the difference, but uh, it's not a right answer to your point because there are two different uh, characters there. Why do you want to reach indifference? Is it because we are disappointed with? Perhaps the dialectical process in totality. Because it's, it's as if we abandon the trying to find a way out mm -hmm. by you know going back to the basic, the minimum difference. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a step back? Anti dialectical in a sense. No, I take seriously your question, so why? Yeah. It's an important point in any serious investigation. You must always have two elements, a problem and a conceptuality. If you have only conceptuality, so you can have a, a book, you open it, it's full of ideas, full of concepts, but there is no problem to, to which this uh, concept could uh, refer. And on the contrary, you can have a, a, another book, another investigation, where you have a, an interesting problem, but no adequate conceptuality to face it. So a good investigation should always have two, a problem and a conceptuality. So just to answer your question, my, I had a problem, that's why I, I went back to this conceptuality. It is how to neutralize this uh, uh, the logical dichotomy, specially concerned by the power of splitting and producing continuous, uh, dividing life, so separating forth from life. This was my problem, and this is why I went back to work and tried to find uh, the conceptuality who could allow me to face this problem. So uh, this is just an answer because you said why. Why is it? For this reason, because I had to face this problem, then if it is the right uh, conceptuality, is this adequate, we can discuss about it. 
But for me, it was just, sorry, I, did, I don't imply that indifference is better than uh, dialectical, uh, as you would, dialectical uh, proceeding to unity. No. Uh, by the way, there was an opposition between Hegel and Schelling. You know, he Hegel and this model of uh, a unity achieved through a dialectical movement, and a certain moment of his life, uh, Schelling refused this model and tried a very obscure way to think not a dialectical unit of um, the dualism, but a kind of a dark and obscure and groundless indifference. That is, as far as Schelling is concerned. But my, my one, the, the reason why I am now speaking about uh, indifference uh, or bipolarity, etc., is in order to try to face this problem and also to try to explain what I meant when I said for hyphen of hyphen life. Now, why there are these three hyphens or these two hyphens? No, it's just the idea of uh, something that, uh, while formed by two concepts, form and life, cannot be split. Why? Because in this thing, the two terms are in indifference. Not because there is a peculiar soul. You have the, it's not that you you against for instance, you have power and against you and you struggle, you fight, you are strong and you keep you united with your formula. It's not like that because uh, no force is enough to resist uh, for instance the, the when you are put in a camp. <laughs> so you, uh, that's why I was thinking on the contrary, it's not a, something that depends on the individual strength or power of resistance. You try to think a model of uh, life that could uh, face the split of the life. Yes? Uh, I'm reminded of, the, of Dante's love for Beatrice and Kierkegaard's love for Regina. And in Kierkegaard, you get out of lower immediacy the, the grotesque childish phase of only liking things that have properties um, by becoming a knight of resignation and resigning Be a knight of resignation and resigning uh, yourself to the world, resigning any connection, only so that you can get into higher immediacy and um, form a relationship, and it's the relationship that defines you uh, with another person, and not the person themselves. Um, would indifference be indifferent to um, an all-defining commitment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it, it could be. At the beginning of Heidegger's Desire to Self, he says, and I want to mm -hmm. paraphrase here, what, what do? Desire to Self, you know, this, the age of the world picture. He, he says, and I, and I will only paraphrase here, the very first sentence, a decision is made concerning a metaphysic, and every instantiation follows upon that. And he defines this very clearly as dangerous, that if everything is made into a picture, everything is then grounded, everything that can possibly be is constructed within that ground. Which, uh, is dismissed, it's covered over. And everything, even uh, those things, there are even categories for all those things that don't fit in a picture. An anomaly, an accident, a miracle, uh, all of these things already fit in the picture. And the, the, the danger, and it's the, the danger of modernity, and it's a technical danger, is that uh, there's no possibility of ungrounding that ground. So I thought that that also had to do with some of the, the problematic exists between uh, techniques and uh, the concept of, of indifference, which is so very important as a mm, counterposition or counterbalance to techniques. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, we'll uh, go and we'll reach this point also. Uh, the concept of Weltanschauung, the word of presentation for Heidegger was uh, went uh, with the, 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 the prevailing of subjectivity or modern subjectivity. You know, 